Hello, everybody. This your girl, Blessed Abundantly. I do have to do this. I'm going to have to do this document because I had put out a video, but I will delete that video. Uh, first, I want to talk about the um, the actor that got arrested and charged with child pornography and sending explicit photos to twin 13-year-old boys. Uh, his name is Jerry Harris, and he became famous earlier this year with a documentary, with a Netflix documentary series called Cheer, where he's cheerleading and, and all of that. People thought he was an upbeat young man. He's 21 years old. Uh, they had charged him um, after twins had reported that he sent them um, explicit photos of himself and he cornered from what I was reading he allegedly cornered one of the twins and tried to uh, get them to perform oral sex on him or something like that that's what I was reading and he allegedly cornered one of the twins and tried to get that person to perform oral sex on him these twins are only 13 years old and it's a 21-year-old man. Um, also, he was caught with producing child pornography. So, I was watching where he thought that he wasn't supposed to be in jail because of fear of catching COVID-19. It's like, sir. You were trying to get twin boys to have sex with you. That was 13 years old. You are sending these twin boys explicit photos of yourself. And you was caught with child pornography. with having videos of kids and all of this stuff. Probably kids or pictures. Either videos or pictures. I'm sorry. Either videos or pictures of kids. You are not getting out of jail. You a grown man who could have went to another grown man, somebody that was around 18, 19 years old that was legal. I guess um, you're legal to drink in most states at 21. You could have went with somebody around his age who would have been willing to give it to him for free. You know, you could have asked around to grown people. People who are grown, living on their own, who are probably in college. You're going to kids. And this is a problem that we have. We have this problem in the church where people are being molested by the pastors, by members of their church. Um, we have a problem. And I have heard of stories, even in my family, and I have experienced it myself where I was molested by somebody who was way older, five years older than me. And when you become a certain age, like in Atlanta, you are an adult at 17. In New York State, you are an adult when you become 18 years old. So he knows better than this. He, he knows better than this. He is a predator. He victimized kids. He prey on kids. And I'm not talking about the P-R-A-Y neither. I'm talking about the P-R-E-Y. But this stuff goes on in Hollywood. Where these kids, and if you notice, a lot of these child stars, they grow up and all of a sudden they start having a mental breakdown. Because their parents have left them in the hands of these grown adults. Uh, there has been a report about Michael Jackson being left alone, allegedly left alone with grown men. You know, because his father, we already know he was physically abusive. And he wanted, though, to, you know, they made it out the ghetto and... He became millionaires because of the Jackson Five. 
he used his boys to get them out together. And he was hard. He was very harsh. And if they, if these producers, record labels and everything was like, I need to see, you know, your boy. He will probably sit up there and leave them alone. I don't, I don't know. You know, uh, allegedly there's reports that Michael Jackson was being molested by grown men. Allegedly. And I'll say allegedly because his brothers is right now um, knocking down claims that he ever molested children. Because there has been two guys who came out after Michael Jackson's death and said that they were molested by Michael Jackson during their stay at Neverland. And his brothers have came out and disputed that. They said Michael Jackson's not that type of guy. But Michael Jackson has been accused of molestation starting in 1993. That was the first time he was ever accused of child molestation of being with a um, a boy that was 13 years old. Um, and that case got dismissed. Uh, actually, he paid that family off. Um, he gave them a certain amount of money, and then he went and got with Lisa Marie Presley and married her. But she had mentioned that Michael Jackson was around a bunch of kids, young boys. And she just got tired of that. And then somewhere in the early 2000s, he got accused again after the Martin Bashir interview where he's doing the interview. And I had this on videotape. He's holding hands with a young boy, probably around the age 13. And it's like, okay, you got these kids over your house, but you got kids of your own now. Where, where the heck is your kid? You're claiming that these young boys are your best friend. And I think that Michael Jackson's mental, mental breakdown happened after the Pepsi commercial where he had suffered third, second and third degree burns on his scalp. And when, you know, his, when his appearance started changing, he started getting lighter. I guess he was going through the vitiligo. I guess they call that skin disease where you lose pigmentation in your skin. And so I think he started finding comfort with these young boys. But he himself could have had suffered this child molestation. There's reports out there that my, allegedly Michael Jackson was molested as a child by these grown men. That was in the music industry. Uh, uh, some lady had um, made a video where the where all the Jackson Five was touched by some grown men, allegedly. So we had this problem. I mean, people have dealt with this in their own family, whether their family went to church or not, where somebody in their family, a cousin. A brother, maybe a dad or a stepdad. I remember hearing when I was finding my own biological family, I have heard reports of my mother's family on how, you know, my grandma married a man. And the stepfather, he was the father of three kids out of the eight kids that she had. But the majority of them was named after him because... You know, back in those days, you don't want people to be asking questions of why your kids got different fathers. And this is what I heard, that the man that she married was touching on them. Young girls, you know, he had messed around with all types of women and kids. He was just, just a molester. He was, he was basically a monster to them. And I didn't know this until like around 2010 and everything. 
what I got with my biological mother, she just said the family had a lot of secrets. But people in the family started telling me that he, you know, he was doing things to the young girls of the family. It's like, wow. And sometimes people could experience that and then their kids will experience it later on with being molested. We heard of Donnie McClurk and how he was molested, you know, was touched by his uncle and cousin, male, male uncles and cousins. And for years, he dealt with his sexuality because he's in the church. And, you know, that was one thing in the church that being gay was a sin. So you have people who's who's battling with their sexuality. They're trying to be with the opposite sex, but they are attracted to the same sex because of their experience of when they was a child. And I even had a lady who I worked with uh, tell me that she was she was not only molested by a man, she was raped actually by her grandmother's boyfriend as a child. And then her father's wife was molesting her for years. And she waited till she was grown to tell him that his wife was touching on her, was having sex with her. And we heard about the Catholic priest. You know, when that girl told me that, you know, she cried because she didn't feel loved. And she felt like the only way she could be, feel loved is she had a child. And I told my brother the story, who's a preacher, and he was like, uh, and this preacher is seven years younger than me, but he was, he was around 18, 19 at the time. And he was like, well, what did you tell her? What, you know, what did you minister to her about, you know? And I'm like, I couldn't minister to her because I was sitting up there crying with her. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what to say. I, of course, I experienced being blessed to by a male who was five years young, I'll be five years older than me, but, um, you know, I was still there crying with her, you know, because of what she went through. Of course, people deal with this stuff differently because I was able to forgive my molester. And I think being around people who love me in the church, because the church that I grew up in, we was all like family. You know, even though I was adopted, it was like, you know, my mom, that my adopted mother that was most of her family that was members of that church and um we was all just like family and so i felt the love um and everything else uh and i miss church being that way too because nowadays people don't love like they used to but there are people who had experienced stuff at the church that was horrible. It was abused by the pastor. It was, you know, and it seems like nowadays I'm hearing, and I would say allegedly, it seems like there are some people that attach themselves to ministry and they become spiritual sons and daughters, but they are sleeping with the um, spiritual parents, kind of like allegedly. And now, let me go back to this Jerry Harris. He is, I hope he get what he deserves because he should know better. And when you are messing with kids in prison or do anything to a child, those prisoners do not have mercy on you at all. He should have known better. And people, you are sick when you mess with kids. There is something mentally wrong with you because you are this grown person and you pray it on kids. Now, everybody experience is different. Donnie McClurkin, because he was messed with by men in his family, being the uncle and the cousin, he went through years of struggling with his sexuality. You know, he's in the church, and he could just come out and say, hey, I'm gay, and this is my truth. Because they didn't accept that back then. It wasn't acceptable back then at all. Um... And that lady, she wound up having a baby out of wedlock and not being able to have a normal relationship with a man because of what she dealt with. The lady who was molested by the, who was raped by the grandma's boyfriend 
and molested by her stepmother. She wasn't able to have a normal relationship and she felt like the only way she could experience love was to have a kid that would probably feel the love that she needed to have, you know. She didn't feel love at all. Me, you know, I was around people who had loved me in the church. They had no problems throughout high school. Uh, had parents that I lived with that raised my daughters. We basically grew up together. And that was the way I dealt with. You know, people didn't come at me with, oh, you should be hurt and all this stuff until years later, until, believe it or not, <laughs> until a few years ago. Uh, and that was after my um, adopted father passing and people started accepting anything in their life. Because they didn't understand and they didn't ask me no questions or anything like that. It just felt like I was supposed to hate this person. And it was like, no, me and the person who molested me, actually I was able to forgive them. They never put their hands on me again because the molestation stopped when it was found out that I was pregnant. And, you know, my parents was blinded towards what was going on because I, I didn't tell them at the time out of fear. And I was a kid. This had happened years ago. And I'm not ashamed to tell my story. I know that there are no good people out there that might try to use it against me. But I'm not hurting. And I don't move forward with my life. Um, when it was found out around the time that, you know, I was going back to court to the doctor to find out why I was having a period. They thought I had cancer. They didn't know what was going on. This person was coming up to the hospital out of fear. And right before it was found out that I was pregnant, they was like, well, if you are pregnant, you need to tell that it was a dude out of town and all of this stuff. And my mom was solely blind to why this person had people drop him off at the hospital and everything else. She thought it was because he had a concern about, you know, my health or anything like that because the doctors, they didn't know what to think. And then that was preparing me for surgery because it was, they felt like that was cancer. They would tell my mom it might be cancer because now I started to show because for a while I wasn't showing. For almost seven months, I didn't show at all. Then I started, my belly started growing a little bit. And so they needed to do a sonogram to find out where this cancer was at. And sure enough, there was a baby on the screen when they came up with the sonogram. It's not funny. I was in tears because I couldn't even believe I was pregnant. I was doubting the fact that I was pregnant and, you know, I had just turned 14. And I'm like in unbelief because I knew that I had a friend or I knew somebody in Rochester, New York, because we had went to church in Rochester um, we had visited there often. My father would have to preach at the church in Rochester. He was good friends with a pastor there. And I knew a girl from that church who had just gave birth at, at the age of 13. And so I was well in denial that I could be pregnant. And sure enough, I was pregnant. And when I went to the Lamaze class, I was the youngest one in there. There was a girl that was 16 who was pregnant. And her mother and my mother got along just fine throughout that Lamaze class. And we had our babies around the same time. And this was a, a, a white lady and her daughter. And me and the girl was friends. And we gave birth around the same time. We was in a hospital together, at Children's Hospital together in Buffalo, New York at the same time. But my parents, they still wasn't happy. And, you know, um, for that period, you know, I was getting, you know, it seemed like I was being blamed for everything just about four minutes. My father, he wasn't saying much, but my mom was really 
upset and she showed it until the baby came. And I think that things had changed because it was like when the baby came out and she saw it because my mom was there when I went into labor and she was there the whole time up until I had the baby and that's when she was in tears and she held the baby. You know, I let her hold the baby. I didn't hold her for the first time and she was crying. That's when she named her. Um, actually, they already had given her a name. They came up with a name. So they named her, but she, you know, called her nickname Precious. And she was in tears and crying and everything. And, and that's when things had changed. And, you know, she came up to the hospital to visit me and then uh, we had went home a couple of days later and, you know, they fell in love with her. You know, they raised her like, as their own daughter. And for years, she didn't know I, I was her mother until, until it was around the time when she was getting ready to go into work and she needed her birth certificate and I was on the birth certificate. Because they had told me for years that they had already adopted her and she was adopted and all that stuff. And I believe that. They didn't sign no papers. Nothing like that. I just believed it. Then I thought they could do it because I was a minor. <laughs> but come to find out, no, she was not. She was never adopted. My name was on a birth certificate, and they had to tell her what's going. And I wish they hadn't waited long, but she's okay now and everything like that. But I just wanted to come on and share that because I wanted to talk about this share of stars that is. Um, the guy that was on a Netflix documentary series, Cheer, uh, this Jerry Harris, that is not cool. And something is mentally wrong with people who mess with kids. I mean, these people was not even two years younger than him. Well, they would be adults if they was two years younger than him. But you mess with people that's not even high school. And even if they was in high school, they was way too young. If they was 18 years old, coming out of high school, I would say, okay, they kind of like adults, okay? They're three years younger than hell. They are considered adults in most states. And they are at the point where they could leave high school and no parent or police could question them. They could just drop out of high school and live their life. They able to work at 18, a full-time job. And that would have been different. Now, he would, if he had been a teacher, if it's a teacher that's messed with a student that's 18 years of age, they could lose their job and their teacher's license. But I don't think they could be convicted of any crimes because of the age of the person, because they're legally an adult. But you can't mess with the students. And there has been reports that teachers have lost their jobs because they messed with somebody that was 18 years old, that was in a class. Because you do have people that still go into high school that's 18 and 19 years old. There was somebody who was supposed to graduate with me that was actually 20 years old, almost 21 years old. And I was 18 at the time. And Got to find out he was born in, in 1970. And what happened is that he had to repeat they, his freshman year three times. And then come senior year, he didn't even graduate. And I was like, you know, I feel sorry for this guy. And a classmate was like, why are you feeling sorry for him? He has never carried a book ever since we have known him. You have never seen him with a book. And I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, you are right. So, I mean, a teacher messing with him, even though he was like 20, 21, they would lose their job, but they would never be charged because he was an adult. So, this guy, he knew better. He had pictures or videos of these kids. And, you know, I don't know why people think that these kids would, you know, 
you have to be mental. You have to be really, really a crazy person to be messing with kids. You got all these adults, developed adults, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, people that, that look good in their 20s and 30s. Now, I'm not attracted to younger people. I am, you know, I prefer somebody that's a little bit older. But you got adults here that's working, that's legal to drink, that have their own place cars and everything else and you praying after a bunch of kids you are a sick individual now let's change the subject i am going to do this on record and delete the video that i made early this morning because i don't want to use people actual names anymore there is an old man out here that is doing the most on youtube and he has nitpicked with five individuals that I know, know of. I'm not going to include myself in this because he just threw something my way and said, well, I could sue you, but, you know, I know you don't have enough money. Well, you can't sue me for the truth. But This old man decided to get on his platform when he was chasing after the YouTube brother and sister. I would put it that way because they're not actually related. They call themselves brother and sisters. And Ed kept going after the brother. He mentioned the sister. And another famous prophetess that we know as Mama B. And said that the sister and Mama B had a homosexual relationship, a lesbian relationship, when the sister was up under Mama B ministry. That they was bumping ugly. And actually, he told his followers last week that somebody was putting on a strap on because there was another person involved that was there while this was going on. And I'm thinking Mama B is well known. Mama B has been preaching for a while and everybody has a favorite, favorite sermon that Mama B has preached. Everybody that I know of have a favorite sermon that Mama B has preached. And the well-known sermon of all time was No More Sheets, but people has, uh, you know, they love the opera of my soul, I think that's called, and other sermons that Mama B had preached uh, in the early 2000s. And Mama B has a million followers now. Mama B is about to do a sermon tonight <laughs> uh, with this atonement. <laughs> uh, which she's doing. It's called the Atonement, Day of Atonement. Um, but the title is in Jewish. Um, I guess it's young Kip, Kipper. Uh, no quote we wrong. It's, it's, it means atonement. Uh, Day of atonement. And um, Mama B has throughout the years been training spiritual daughters and son to be in ministry. Um, to to be able to do conferences, I guess, and to preach in pool pits. And there has been allegations of Mama B um, being with the spiritual daughters or being with um, people in ministry. There has been allegations out there. Now, this is what I know that that is true of Mama B. And that is, there was a young lady who came out, and I, I would call this person a tomboy because they are um, basically butch. They not they was more fit with them when they met Mama B, but they are butch. This tomboy came out in 2017 
and made a video, a couple of videos about how they met Mama B and that her and Mama B had a relationship in the early days of around the time where Bring Back the Glory or uh, uh, not Bring Back the Glory, but um, oh man, oh boy. I can't think of that conference right now, but it was the first one that Mama B had did. And around that time, she didn't know that Mama B was a preacher. That's what she said. And then when she found out, when she went to the con this conference with her grandma and stuff, that's when she found out that Mama B was a preacher. And Mama B was like, well, you know, I do the God thing. Uh, and then I go back to my life or whatever else. Um, and so I reached out to this person a couple of months ago after seeing the video and seeing them on somebody else's platform. And they told me the video that they did was done in 2017 and that they did have a four year relationship, a relationship that lasted from 98 to 2002. Now, Mama B got married to a uh, preacher. In 2002. And, you know, the wedding was all over the TV and stuff like that. Now, the young lady, the, the tomboy, has told me that in the past, Mama B, not only been with women, but men, promising men in ministry, men that was in ministry in the past, nothing present. And she did let me know that she don't know of her having any relationship with any women nowadays or anything like that. That only in the past she been with men and women. And Mama B had told that on Frank Ski Morning Show that she used to, you know, she did the drugs. She used to be with men. She used to be with men, women. Uh, so she told it on a Frank Ski Morning Show in Atlanta, Georgia, during an inspirational vitamin. So, this blogger had put that out there. When he put it out there the first time, that there was Barclay Ugly, the sister and Mama B. Uh, the sister denied it on her video. It said they never had that type of relationship, that the Mama B was helping her and scriptures and everything else. They fall out was when Mama B cousin decided to leave without saying goodbye. You know, she believed that this person was her husband and husband Janet. Um, and so when her and Mama B fell out, that's when she went public and went to, you know, her story got on different platforms about Mama B and she met her brother through that way. The tomboy introduced her. Now, I wonder how the tomboy and the sister met. That's what I wonder. I wonder if, if the tomboy, if she just had so happy to see her page or if the tomboy went and found her and told her her story about her experience with Mama B and then them two got together and that's when she introduced the brother to the sister. Because this blogger, this, the old man is claiming that, that the ex-husband of Mama B had cameras all around the house and that he knew what went on in his house while he was not there. That would bring up grounds for abuse, so, if that was true. Oh, here's that, because he probably came in whooping somebody's behind or something like that. Unless he was enjoying what he was saying. I don't, you know, if that happened. If that happened. I'm not saying it did. You know, because I, I believe that it didn't. He probably did have cameras to watch out to make sure ain't nobody breaking his home. But uh, I don't think he planned on them there to catch somebody in the act. 
But this is what this blogger is, is saying. This is what this old guy is saying. This old man is. So he's going after them. Uh, what happened is the brother and sister came up with some fake court documents. And I hated that that happened because I wanted to believe that, you know, this old man did this stuff. But I could never find it for myself. And come to find out the old man didn't have no criminal charges. I know that the brother and sister was frustrated because they was being, you know, talked about. Shots was being thrown at them. And then they came up with these court documents. And it's like, oh, man. And now that could be grounds for defamation of character and everything. But I don't see where the old man lost any money behind it. Um, you know, that could be slandering, but if what he said about Mama B is false, <laughs> uh, I think with Mama B, you're tired of all this stuff, and Mama B on TV, and Mama B trying to, you know, build up her ministry, and Mama B is trying to go places with this ministry, and had the conferences that she once had, where she packed out the Georgia Stadium, and the old man is putting out there, that she bumped ugly with these people and, and you know, that the brother had already got it out there that she sleep with the spiritual daughters, the, some of the, you know, spiritual daughters and stuff. I don't know whether they are the bumblebees or just people that's just working around the ministry or something like that, but uh, she might feel like dropping some lawsuits and start suing some people. So, I'm thinking, so I, I like to put it this way. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking that people just need to be careful. If you don't have the actual receipts, don't put it out there. Or say allegedly, this is what somebody told me. This was somebody said. Like, if that stuff about the time boy and mom B is false, I would say, hey, listen, I was just repeating what she put on her platform. I had shared the email that she, that we had shared you know, sent each other. Um, and then she was on somebody else's platform. So these are stories that she told on her platform, on somebody else's platform. Um, people had emailed her and she told her story to them. So you need to go after her. You need to go after her. Uh, but they also had mentioned that porn in the poop pit. And Mama B had something going on. Not the old man. It was the brother. <laughs> it was on the brother's platform. Uh, so I'm thinking, who is this third person? Is it the tomboy who does have a YouTube channel? But I don't think it's monetized. I, they be on they platform from time to time. I haven't seen no recent videos. Uh, but I have seen them following the I'm not gay anymore person. And I have seen them follow uh, porn from porn to the pool pit. Uh, I don't think they follow Mama B's ministry. But I'm thinking that this was the girl who was in, who who was a part of what, um, Mama B, I'm sorry, who was a part of Mama B's uh, ministry in the early days, in the early 2000s. And then she moved on, became friends with a young blogger, the brother, and heard about the story from the sister and introduced the sister to the brother. And they all did their video. And it went from there. And with Mama B and the Bubble Bee seeing what was going on on the internet or on Facebook, that's when some of the Bumble Bees started clapping back at him and going in his inbox and you know mama b's siblings was calling the sister and everything you know so we have heard so everything i know that mama b was not too happy that that was all over the internet and she had mentioned some things on her platform concerning that 
And I know the last time she mentioned it was in 2019. At the beginning, when she was in Atlanta, Georgia, staying at a friend's house. That door her at three with me there. That she mentioned it. And then I see the video when she came back home. Because she went to the doctor's office and they wasn't allow her to fly. So she had to stay in, in Georgia at a friend's place. And when she came back and did her at three with me from our house, she had broke down and cried at the end of that um at the end of that video that said she just loved so hard and everything. But we know that there are signs where mama be get emotional. She got very emotional when they did the studio for the first time and she was clapping, you see her parade and then she fell out busted out into tears. Of course, um uh, you had a uh, well known walker who sat up there and um having his friend did a joke about it. Um so she do get emotional at times, but she could be a, a tough person to deal with. I, and allegedly, she could be a tough person to deal with at times. And, you know, she she done dealt with mental illness in the past and, you know, deal with around the time that she divorced her first husband, she had a mental breakdown. And a time boy let it be known on her platform that Mama B had four miscarriages, so, um, you know, sometimes that could cause a woman to, to be depressed, not being able to produce kids or anything. Um, the second marriage that, when that ended, and it was all over the news that, you know, that she got beat up in a parking lot of a hotel by the ex-husband, by the second husband, um, you know, that caused her to be depressed because now, you know, people are seeing this person, you know, I know that there might have been some people who had fallen off. Um, so, you know, she probably had her moments of depression there. So... Now, you know, people is following her. A lot of people is following her on Facebook. Um, you know, people have been calling her to speak. Uh, the thing that happened in Virginia, she had, you know, broken down into tears because she was sad that she had to cancel that due to the past six ignorance. And, you know, the bloggers came after her. The bloggers came after her. People came after her and attacked her on on uh, on social media because of that. But it was really that pastor's fault. He he knew better than to meet up with somebody at a hotel, especially a female. Uh, with all this with all these people being exposed in ministry and people cheating left and right, one thing you don't want to do is go up there to meet a woman yourself at a hotel. That's one thing you don't want to do. He could have sent another female to send those flowers to send whatever he had um, to send the gift up there. He could have had gave it to Mama B assistant, whatever he wanted to give. Uh, he wanted to go up there, and I can understand if you check it on the room, but you could have checked on the room before the assistant arrived. <laughs> and then second of all, when you get the key from somebody, these people already know who had checked into that room. And they should have told at the front desk. So it's really his fault and the front desk fault, too. He knew that the assistant was there. He could have had went up there with the assistant. The assistant would have probably told him that we already put her bags in there. I got stuff out there, her personal items. Everything is fine with the room. He says nothing to the assistant. And whether the assistant had added on that the people was asking about panties or not, he was still, the pastor was still in the room. Period. And so I'm hoping that the old man bloggers 
you know, hoping that he ain't on his platform saying some false stuff because, you know, with him threatening to throw around lawsuits and everything, that's one thing you don't want to do. My video was flagged for copyright infringement. And was taken down because I did take a piece of his video of what he said about Mama B and the sister. And so I got hit with a copyright strike. So I have to wait till December 26th for this copyright strike to be removed. But I'm good. I'm in good spirits. It ain't nothing else going to happen because, you know, I'm be careful. There's somebody that's following me that follow him that probably told him. Because that happened real quick. The minute I put that video up there, hour later, look, you got a strike. Copyright strike. So anyway, I wanted to talk about these two things. About the Jerry Harris situation with these kids and him being charged. And, you know, people like that who prey on kids, they are sick in their head. Something is totally wrong with them because that's not right at all. And, you know, when people say that homosexuality is a sin, people are coming out saying that the Bible didn't say it was a sin. That they're talking about uh, the people who prey on younger folks like kids and all of that. That that's what the Bible... There are commentaries who do explain the Bible different. Everybody look at the Bible different. And I know for years people were taught that homosexuality is a sin. And I'm saying where some of these commentaries are saying that they are saying that they are mentioning that sleeping with kids is a sin. Being with kids. Now, both kids, sleeping with kids is a sin, is sick. Is disturbing. Um, it's not even. That's not normal at all. These kids are not developed, and they could go through a lot of problems in their life when they become older because of their experience with these no good adults. And nobody in their right mind will mess with, if you in your right mind, you ain't mess with no kids. You know better. You know that there's a ton of grown people that you could get, that you could hook up with, that would have sex with you for free. And so it doesn't make no sense for no grown adult to be messing with kids. And I, I would, who I would go, Oh my God, I would totally go off if it's somebody in my family. Because, I mean, that's one thing I I don't want to see happen. I mean, I experienced somebody put their hands on me that was five years older than me and did it for years until it was found out that I was pregnant. But I was able to forgive that person because, like I said, because of the love that was around uh, because of the encouragement that came from the church family and, you know, because of our family raising and taking in my daughter as they own. But there are a lot of people who get messed up mentally. And it's not, it's not good. People deal with these things differently. There have been people who have been victimized by these folks and they go and tell somebody and the people don't believe them. Or the people go off on them and blame them for it happening to them, you know. Um, and it's not good. Um, this Jerry guy, uh, this Jerry Harris, I hope he gets what he, I hope they throw the book at him because he don't need to be around nobody kids. You know, and it's sad if Michael Jackson was a pedophile, if he was a pedophile, he should have got it too. Because it seemed like people with money, they just could get out of everything. They could pay their way out of it. They could get these good lawyers and everything else. And get right out of it. Um, 
but Michael Jackson brothers have been coming to his defense and saying that he's not that type of person. I mean, when I say that interview with Marcia Bashir, I was disturbed because he was holding his boy's head and said that they be laying in bed together and he fixed them some more. And I'm thinking, where the heck is your kids? Because they showed his kids in that interview when he went to the hotel in Las Vegas. That's when they showed his kids. But at his house, you didn't see his kids or nothing. I mean, it was a couple of things that was disturbing me that he still talked to Liberace. And Liberace had been dead for years. He gets songs when he's up in the um up in his tree. I forgot the name of the tree. <laughs> uh, but it's, that documentary is on YouTube. <laughs> um in a, in a way he was saying that he does a little bit of automatic writing as well. Where they get their songs from the spirit world. And nobody really caught that part. Part They caught the part where he was holding the boy's hands. And actually the boy, the boy's mother seen it. And decided to press charges against him. Had them investigate and took him to court. And that's when they hid the boy's identity. They didn't hide it when he was being interviewed by Martin for sure. It's like he holds his boy's head. And this boy had other siblings hanging around, but this boy sat by Michael Jackson. He said, this is his best friend and all this other stuff. And it's like, Michael Jackson, you in your 40s or something. You you got best friends that's 13-year-old? So that was very disturbing. But his brothers had came out after his death when these other two guys came and said that he did this and that to the his brothers that came out said Michael wasn't that type of person and no nah, he ain't doing that and they they fight for him so but you know um these people are sick when they sit up there and touch on kids they are very sick and I do when I talk about the Freemasons I do want to talk about Alester Crawley. I believe that's his name. He was considered the most um, terrifying, I think, horrible man in history. He was a Satanist who also preyed on kids and believed that, you know, a boy of a young age, you were supposed to raped, I guess, to get some type of power or something like I was thinking, you know, these people are sick. But he was definitely a Satanist. He called himself the beast. He wrote 666 on his forehead. Um, And people in the music industry, there was people in the mu music industry like the Beatles who praised this man. See, people didn't know that, that the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper Lonely Heart Club Band was actually a dark album. And they made a movie years later using the Bee Gees and Peter Fompton. Forgive me for the pronunciation of his name. Um, but the Beatles, they had a Lester Crowley on the cover of their album along with, along with a lot of dead people. And they almost put Hitler on there, but they put him in the background because they knew that that would cause controversy if they had Hitler on the album. Because Hitler was a Satanist. He followed Madame Lebowski. And Elvis Presley followed Madame Lebowski as well, who was a Satanist. So, you know, Alessa Crowley believed in molesting kids, especially boys of a tender age, believed that uh, raping these kids uh, to cause them to have a split personality to be demonically possessed but these yeah, these kids of course they suffer mentally even in their adulthood if they survive these these things because they have been kids who, who have died because somebody like a baby people have been trying 
raping babies. I'm like, why in the world would you? That, that's sick. These these people are sick. There have been babies who have died because somebody had, or their insides was messed up. You know, these kids are not developed. So these people are demonically possessed, I believe. A lot of them. A lot of them are sick individuals. All of them are sick individuals. And, you know, uh, even in Hollywood, they, they do these things. They had a movie called, um, and I'll give you an example, a movie called Pretty Baby. And uh, then I'm going to, I have to go because I'm running out of time. I'm supposed to have been at the store to get some more juice. <laughs> I might get it tomorrow um, anyway, because this is my day to lay around. Um, Cause I haven't been feeling well lately. I've been, but I think it's, uh, it's not the COVID-19, of course, thank God. It's something else. I have allergies and, and stuff. And then the weather is starting to change somewhat. It was cold some mornings and stuff like that, but I'm okay. Um, uh, and then I had a growing a boy or so, something somewhere, and the doctor had dealt with most of it. It was like oh, a whole lot of pus was coming out of there. Um, and then I was given some instructions, just put some warm water on it, try to, you know, squeeze it out and all of that stuff. So that could be the problem there too. Um, but no, it ain't no COVID nineteen. They got. Um, there was a movie that came out in the late 70s with Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields at the time. Brooke Shields was like about 10, maybe 12 at the most. She was 12 years old when she started this movie. And I was very young the first time I watched this movie. I was like uh, 13, 14, maybe younger than that and me and my sister got up late at night we we used to sneak up at night and watch the shows that you know made sure my parents was in the bed and watch hbo and showtime late at night and the one movie that came on was pretty baby brooke shields was because in 84 she was like 18 years old so if you think back this movie came out like in 77, 78. She was about maybe 12 at the most. Between 10 and 12 years old. And she played a child prostitute. And I'm thinking, I wasn't thinking at the time when I first seen that movie, but when I seen it when I was living in Alabama a few years ago, I was like, I can't watch this. I couldn't watch that movie. That movie was so disturbing to me. Watching it as a child wasn't because I forgot most of the movies. I was up trying to see what was going on and stuff like this. I just seen this grown man mess with this kid. Yeah, but as an adult watching it or trying to watch it because I had to turn the channel, I could I could not watch that movie. I could not believe they had even made that movie. And when I had read up on the movie, I heard that they got a lot of backlash for making that movie. People was, people was pissed off because this was a kid. She was not even developed. She ain't had no chest at all. This was a kid that they sat up there. And I felt like everybody who watched that movie was promoting child, child pornography. That movie was very disturbing to me. And that was one of the most, that was more disturbing than the accused star Jodie Foster when she was raped in a bar by three men and there would have been more if she hadn't ran out of there. That was more disturbing than that because this had an actual child in here, not somebody who planned the child, not some grown person Somebody who just looked young parent. This was an actual child that was playing as a child prostitute. And they sold her virginity to some man, grown man. And grandma was running a 
prostitution ring and the the child mother was a prostitute the mother was played by Susan Sarandon that was the most disturbing movie I ever in my life watched I could not even watch that the rest of that movie it was so disturbing to me that they actually had these scenes in there I mean, they showed the child in the bathtub. Um, they had the part where they sold her to this guy for the first time. And when they went up there to see was she okay, because this man, grown 50, 60-year-old man, sat there, took this child's virginity. And they didn't show the part and fell with her. They just show when he came running down the stairs and they went to see was she okay. And I thought I actually thought she was dead or that they was gonna have to take her out of the ambulance or something like that. And none of that happened. She turned over and they see was she okay and they was cheering this on and I'm like, are they serious? And then she gets with this old photographer, this guy that says probably 30s and 40s photographer and I was like I can't I can't do this anymore I can't watch this anymore and that's where it ended for me and I was like everybody who have watched that movie is promoting child pornography if they are not disturbed by what is going on in this movie and I, and I can see why it had so much backlash because people was so disturbed by them even making a movie with this child in it. And having this child running all over the place. And I know that she did a couple more movies after that, like Blue Lagoon, where she was where they was practically naked on the island and stuff, but she was older then. She was a grown adult then. But then Hollywood put this child in these movies, at a young age, 10, 12 years old, between the ages of 10 and 12, promoting child pornography, had her acting as a child prostitute. And this is a problem that we have nowadays because there are, we have heard of people being in child prostitution rings at the border in Mexico and all that other stuff. That, that's very disturbing. And you have these things going around somewhere in the United States of America. But the grandma had a business. Grandma had a business where she ran a prostitution ring. Had the daughters prostituted, and, and they're the granddaughter. I mean, they had this child. They forced this child to grow up way before time. It was it was a very disturbing movie. That was a very that was a very disturbing movie. When I struggle with watching pornography, that was one thing I couldn't watch at all. When I used to watch pornography on my on the internet. I would make sure that everybody who I was watching was what if I had to watch people that was like 40, 50 years old that had gray hair, I wasn't watching no kids. I didn't want to watch nobody that was that looked at young. Because I had no interest in that at all. That was not, you know, because I, I I was so much against child pornography and people molesting kids and everything. That that is crazy. That is sick. And when I used to, and I had, you know, used to watch pornography for years, I, everything that I watched, all these people had to be grown. They had to be in their 30s, 40s. I could, I didn't want to watch nobody under 21. If they looked like they was under a certain age, I didn't want to see it. I mean, I even watched people who was who had gray hair. That was more comforting to watch than some kid, you know. I mean, I couldn't even watch movies where they promoted that. That 
that I had to turn the TV off. I was so disturbed by that. I was so disturbed by that. I was disturbed by the accused because they actually raped this woman in a bar. And the, the scenes that they showed, it, it made it seem so real. And they was all taking turns to rape this woman. And they hurt, they held her down. They held her mouth, tried to close her mouth. She was screaming for help. And the people in the front of this bar at the front of the cafe eating and stuff, didn't call the police, didn't do nothing. The people just, you know, the friend walked out. She didn't. I mean, she was disturbed by it, but she ain't called for help or nothing like that. And they, more people, three guys had raped her, but it would have been more had she not, had she not been able to break free and run out of there. But Jodie Foster, she was grown and it just told the story about how she brought her accusers to justice and then went back after the people who was goading it on, who was, you know, laughing and cheering us on and everything else. But that scene disturbed me because I don't like to see women being beaten, hurt, raped or nothing like that. But I definitely don't like to see nobody going after no kids. Yeah, so Pretty Baby disturbed me even more just because it was a child involved. An actual child. And I had to, I had to turn that off. Uh, I was disturbed by that movie. I was just as pissed off as the people who went after them. And the, the parents should have been slapped for allowing... The, the the parents of Brooke Shields should have been slapped for allowing her to be a part of that movie. And the producers, and the writers, and everybody else, and some of the actors and actresses. But that was a very disturbing movie. And, you know, when people, when you watch your porn and stuff, you make sure all these people are adults. Are you watching those kids and stuff? Don't even subscribe to that mess. That you need to call the police if they if, call the police. Don't promote nothing like that. And if you know of somebody who is watching child pornography or who is delighting themselves seeing kids and stuff, you need to report them to the police immediately. Those people need to be arrested. They need to be handcuffed. They need to be at somebody, somebody mental institute, into, you know, they need to be at a mental hospital. So I thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. And I needed to just talk about this Jerry Harris guy and these people in Hollywood. And, you know, you got people in, even in the church. You had the Catholic church. They should have arrested all those priests. But you had women who was being touched on by the nuns. Um, women who had, who was molested by the sisters in the Catholic Church. I've heard of stories like that. And some of these some of these people didn't know that they was being preyed on by you know, they just thought this was the normal because this person was nice to them at all. No, that's not normal activity. That person needs to be in jail. But the one lady, she didn't speak up until years later. And she was like, I just didn't think nothing of it because I was 16. No, there was something wrong with that person. They was praying on you. And they was in the wrong and they should have went to jail. So... And I had to talk about Mama B and the old man blogger, of course, because uh, he out there got some allegations against Mama B. But it's, I think that he only threw Mama B under the bus because of the sister, the, the sister of the blogger, uh, the brother and sister. And I don't want to mention any names. But anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, God bless. Have a blessed day.